The concept of a tuple has been around for a long time, and truthfully, Python was the first language to really popularize the tuple. But C-sharp, on the other hand, took it to the next level, because with the power of type checking, we basically get a more souped up, more flexible array with a lot more features. The quickest way to spot a tuple is by one thing. You can always identify a tuple by its parentheses. The tuple is going to be the only data structure that is going to be housed within parentheses. But what is it about this data structure that makes it special? Why would we use this when we can have things like a list? Well, tuples really shine in one area, and that is when you need to return multiple values from a function. And they're great because you can just take these parentheses and quickly type up the return value and as well have multiple return values in the function. But if this is confusing to you, let's go ahead, let's hop inside VS Code. It'll make a lot more sense once we practice. So the easiest way to create a tuple is simply just to use a var and put literally whatever number that you want to within the parentheses just like this. So we'll have a T, we'll have a two, we'll have a P. And then after this, you can quickly just console.write line it. And this is crazy right here. I've never seen this in any other programming language. You can use this item appending number. All that you have to do is just have the actual value name or the name of the variable. And you can use this kind of unique item appending uh, property to in order to actually access the value. And if we go to .NET watch run, so if I go .NET watch, run just like this you can quickly just go into it and it will lock out all the values but truthfully this is kind of strange looking and a lot of people are not going to be a fan of this so what you can also do is you can quickly go into here and i'll just say values with name use the same exact syntax but on the left what you want to do is uh, have the actual name that you want to give the property and intellisense is going to go crazy so we'll do the same thing as we had before so t and the second one is going to be two and the third one is going to be uh the p again <laughs> and what's going to happen is instead of having the item appending what you will see is the actual property name that you gave it when you made it so go to here and if you go values with name and you can have the first the second and the third, just like this. And I'm sure you guys get the picture, so I'm not gonna continue on with that. So let's just go ahead, let's move on to when you're actually going to use a real tuple. When you're really going to use a tuple is going to be when you need to return multiple values from a function. And here's the crazy part. You can actually declare a type within the parentheses. Now, if you don't know what I mean by that, Watch this, so I can go bool C, I can create a type right here. This is actually a type, just kind of hang on for a second and I'm going to declare the actual function. I'm gonna go down here and you can return a series of integers or a series of strings or any type of data type down here within the actual return. And these parentheses are actually declaring a type. And I can do the same thing up here. I can go string, I can go int, I can go string right here. And once again, you can declare a whole entire type just by the parentheses. And it looks crazy, but once you get used to it, it's pretty powerful. And lastly, I saved the best for last because we are going to be talking about destructuring. And we finally get a good way to be able to destructure because we've had it in JavaScript for a long time, but destructuring really has not made it into C Sharp until now. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to take uh, this right here. I'm just going to copy these, this console.write line. And what I'm going to do is take this variable right here and input it into the console.write line and watch what values we get back. We can now get this tuple back. And instead of actually having to type all of this out right here, we can destructure it again, which is even crazier. So you can go into here, I'm gonna say int a uh, string b, we'll say bool c, and this is actually pretty crazy. You don't even have to have the actual variable, of course, but now we even get the ability to just have the a, b, and c and the whole entire variable destructured out. And it's going to look pretty clean, if I'm gonna say so myself. So I'll go ahead and finish out the last console.write line here. 
and it's actually gonna give me some trouble until since been, it's been going crazy a day and that is pretty much it and if we console.log it out we'll finally see our values anyways hope that you guys enjoyed this if you did make sure to smash that like button smash that subscribe button and as always thank you for watching